simple tutorial. Good morning students. Welcome to SST. So simple tutorial. In the previous class, we had read about tensions and conflicts that arose in the former Soviet republics and in Yugoslavia and Czechoslovakia. Today we will discuss India's relations with post-communist countries, particularly Russia. India has maintained good relations with all the post-communist countries, but relations between Russia and India are the strongest. India's relations with Russia are an important aspect of India's foreign policy. Russia and India share a vision of a multipolar world order. What does this mean? This means the coexistence of several powers in the international system. Collective security. This means greater regionalism. This means settlement of international conflicts through negotiations and not by force. This also means an independent foreign policy for all sovereign countries and decision making through bodies like the United Nations. Dear students, Indo-Russian friendship is a time-tested relationship. No one has been such a trusted friend as Russia has been to us. Undoubtedly, there has been some hiccups after the disintegration of the Soviet Union. Yet, both of them have nurtured strong bond over the years. In order to read Indo-Russian relations, let us divide this topic into small segments. Cultural, military, economic and political. So, cultural first. There have been close cultural relations between India and Russia. Indian heroes from Raj Kapoor to Amitabh Bachchan were very popular names in the Soviet Union. They were in fact household names in Russia as well as many post-Soviet countries. One can hear Hindi film songs all over the region. Look at this report. This is a report by the BBC's Central Asia correspondent Louis Hidalgo in 1998. He says that there has been great love for Indian movies in Uzbekistan. When Moscow ruled in Uzbekistan, Indian films were dubbed in Russian and shown there. A whole generation of Uzbeks, Tajiks and Kazakhs have been brought up knowing our actors like Raj Kapoor. He further says, seven years after the Soviet Union collapsed, the Uzbek passion for Indian films continued. Within months of the release of a new film in India, Pirate copies are already on sale in Uzbek capital Tashkent. This is given in your textbook. You can read it later on. Let us see military relations. The partnership between the two countries developed particularly after the Indo-Soviet Treaty of Peace, Friendship and Cooperation that we read in the Cold War lesson. Russia in fact stands to benefit from this relationship because India is the second largest arms market for Russia. The Indian military gets most of its hardware from Russia. Majority of the Indian defense equipment is currently of Russian made. The most recent purchase from Russia is the S-400 air defense missile system. A deal is already signed with Russia for nuclear powered attack submarine, the delivery of which is getting delayed may be due to ongoing war between Russia and Ukraine. BrahMos, the fastest supersonic cruise missile in the world, has been developed as a joint venture between India and Russia. Sukhoi Su-30 MKI, Russian fighter aircraft, is being built under license by Hindustan Aeronautics Limited for the Air Force. Since 2003, India and Russia are conducting a joint naval exercise called INDR biennially. Let us see economic relations now. When India decided to set up heavy industry, it was Soviet Union who helped us. Russia supplied us capital as well as technical know-how in setting up steel plants at Bhilai, Bokaro and heavy engineering corporation in Ranchi. Since India is an oil importing nation, Russia is important to India and has repeatedly come to the assistance of India during its oil crisis. 
trade between India and Russia also flourished with the passage of time. India is seeking to increase its energy imports from Russia and the republics of Kazakhstan and Turkmenistan. Cooperation with these republics includes partnership and investment in oil fields. Let us see political relationships. If you see the relationship in present Russian-Ukraine war context where the West is bringing UN resolutions against Russia, India is abstaining. But there was a time when India used to be at the receiving end of the Western resolutions at the UN, then it was always the Soviet Union that used its veto power to save India, whether it was Kashmir issue in 1957, over Goa issue in 1961, over Kashmir issue again in 1962, and over Bangladesh liberation in 1971. Recently, when the UN Security Council was discussing India's move after abrogation of Article 370 in Kashmir, Russia backed us again. On India's claim for permanent membership in the United Nations Security Council, Russia has supported our claim again. So here, India seems to get benefited from its relationship with the Soviet Union on international issues. Let us see science and technology. Russia is important for India's nuclear energy plans. India's nuclear power plant in Kudankulam, Tamil Nadu was built in collaboration with Russia. See our achievements in space. India was able to launch its first two artificial satellites, Aryabhat and Bhaskar, in 1975 and 1979 respectively from the USSR. Do you know, in 1984, squad leader Rakesh Sharma was the first Indian to fly to space. This became possible only because of USSR. Russia has also assisted India's space industry, for example, by giving the cryogenic engine when India needed it. Russia and India have collaborated on various scientific projects. At present, Russia is collaborating with India in Mission Gaganyaan. Gaganyaan is India's first human space flight program. I hope you must have understood this relationship. Let me stop here now. With this, we come to the end of the lesson, the end of bipolarity. In the next class, we will meet with some other lesson. Till then, keep reading and have a nice time. Thank you.